I just wanted to test. They didn't want to kill him yet, I guess. All right, whose fault is this? No one's fault. Be careful. We gotta bust out. Oh, believe me, I've tried. I think we have to shut down the computer. Time for a little bada bing, bada boom! Whoa, whoa, whoa. How about we avoid the rock slide scenario? <laughs> there we go. Let's take out the guns. Yep. I can't help feeling like we're being watched. You are. Ugh. Do you have to? I'm getting creeped out here. Where you should are be. They? Oh, they're just waiting. Just waiting. No sign of them. Don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Let's go. My God. Here we go. Oh, shit. Yep. Oh, my God. That's a badass entrance. I mean, that's a cool fight right there. Beast versus Sabretooth. He ain't no match. He ain't no match. Oh, exactly. You're out, dude. You're done. Ooh. Magneto hasn't showed himself yet. It's no good. I can't get it to disarm. Out of the way. Only 15 seconds left. Well, what do we do, Scott? Yeah, what do you yeah. do? What's the plan? Five, four, three, two. No. They just did that. Oh my god. Things are healing at an accelerated rate. Mutants. Footage? They got footage? No, sir. Not yet. <laughs> oh, what? Oh. It's gonna explode. Exactly. Okay, that was interesting. He's gonna hit you. Or he's gonna try. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> oh, damn. There he is, with Pietro. Yep. Mm hmm. My God, he's not ready for this. I love the music they're playing right now. It's so Man, cool. It's, Magneto. it's time to move this along. What? Man, that showdown. I really hope we get that at some point. Shit, 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 shit. The sentinel. Operatives, move out! He released the sentinel. As I knew he would. It's all planned. It's all planned out, man. And now the whole world shit. will know of us. He's bringing the fight to the surface. That's what he's doing. God, they're not prepared for this. Oh my God! Yes, exactly. They really have to work together. They have to work together to take it down. That's what they have to do. You may want to get this. Shit. Yep. Yep. Oh no. Oh no. This is News Chopper Six. We Shit. got something here for the network. Shit. Oh, see this. The cinema design is interesting. I wouldn't say I love it, but it definitely is different, and that's fine. Ooh. Working together like they should. They may be- oh no. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's that? Oh. Oh, that stuff again. They get out of her way. Come on, figure this out, guys. Come on. Damn. Not yet. 
He's stopping them from fighting. The, yep. Excuse me. Smart. Oh, it's detecting him now. Mm-hmm. Hello, Father. What? You haven't seen me angry until now! Father, release my powers! Stay out of this! Mm. Damn. Okay. We'll have to come back for them. Move it. He's right. Everybody on board. We're doing everything in our power to get to the bottom of this. What's your take, Senator? Are they men or monsters? And if they are human, can we trust them? Alien invaders or, or some kind of strange mutation? What happened? Bobby? Amara? Over here. We're all right. Oh, Scott. What happened? How did you guys survive this? Mm, just wait. It was you. Mm -hmm. You did this. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did do it. I was right. Much right. Ah. Okay, guys, let's talk about it. Part two of X Men Evolution season two finale, Day of Reckoning, episode seventeen. Holy crap, I just finished recording my review for part one. Holy shit. What a great episode, part one of Day of Reckoning, episode 16. But episode 17 had so many great moments as well. These episodes were so good. And I'll repeat this again, and then we'll dive into going through the episode to kind of talk about bits and pieces as we're skimming through the episode. Which I normally don't do, but with these two parters, it's kind of, yeah, it's easier to do. But... Just watching part one alone of Day of Reckoning, just watching the part one of X-Men Evolution's finale here for season two was already way better than the two-parter in season one, <laughs> closing out X-Men Evolution season one, because there was so much going on. So we begin part two with the Sentinel being shut down. It was not going to kill Wolverine. The whole idea was to do another test, right? But then later on, we see Magneto has other plans instead. Double checking. Yeah, we are recording. Just double checking. So, the Sentinel, so we see, we have a better look at the Sentinel here. So, the Sentinel is this dark red, and it can expand its chest out to show more weapons, which we see later on. But we see in the light here, as they turn the light on, we see more of the design. Um, and honestly, it has elements of the Sentinel design, as you would expect from a Sentinel design. I'm not really a big fan of the dark red, but here's the thing. They're making the shifts in terms of the look of the Sentinel to make it look a certain way because the 90s series had a very distinct and specific look of their Sentinels and they did not want their Sentinel because X-Men Evolution came out a few years after the end of X-Men, uh, the 90s series, uh, at the time it was ending. Of course, it's coming back for X-Men 97, but when the show ended in, in the 90s show and then X-Men Evolution a couple years later, there was a lot of people that were criticizing X-Men Evolution because it was very different. So, the fact is, on this thing here particularly, they had to make their Sentinel look vastly different, really. Because if they got, like, a color scheme kind of close to the 90s series, or the, the actual face structure, which is, like, two red eyes, but if they made the structure more in line with, like, what you'd expect from the 90s show, they would have been blasted and criticized because they basically copied and pasted. So, they had to do something unique. I'm not the biggest fan of the design of the Sentinel, but, my God, this Sentinel is strong as shit. So we have all this. So the mansion is still locked down. They're trying to figure out a way to get out. They're having to dodge their own weapons in the freaking building because they're locked in there. A lot, no, some of them are. They're knocking down the the, the different uh, guns or whatever. And Scott, Magma, and um, Boom Boom are trying to get in and working out. But of course, Magma finds a way to get in, and she she actually morphs into like her magma form and actually creates like a kind of tunnel to get in which was very smart on her part, because Boom 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 was going to start throwing like her bombs or whatever, exploding shit. Skimming through here, da, 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 da. skim, skim, skim. So that, yeah, so the thing is demolition mode. It's it's going to self-destruct. This thing is going to self-destruct. Um, so we see the different teams walking around. Now, I, I, I've, I'm paused on a shot here. You're not saying this, but I am. Of Avalanche, um, oh God, what's his name? Uh, Blob and Pietro. So, they're all 
looking around because they see the pods or the orbs, the balls from Magneto and his new brotherhood. And they're all like in this area trying to find them. So they have separate teams. Here's the thing. I wasn't shocked because I predicted that Mystique was pretending to be Professor, Professor X. I didn't predict Pietro was going to betray them. I didn't predict that. I, I wasn't thinking it. I was like, as soon as he ran away and then Wanda goes, it's a trap, which is a little bit later as I'm skimming through here. But when she does, I'm like, oh my God, he betrayed them. And, I, and oh my God. And it brought back all those memories <laughs> about the, the childhood and everything. So he was, but there was a shot of him. Pietro, like right here, he kind of he's kind of like smirking a little bit. So I think it's kind of setting up. Yeah, this is gonna be a trap. They're all so we have a couple of the X Men talking. Here comes one of Gambit's cards, and the mayhem ensues. And then Pietro runs out. It's a trap. And then all so all the metal stuffs being picked up, and you hear the noise all the way around. And Magneto is so strong now. He, he he's not even nearby. He's on a he's on a tall building, pretty far away manipulating all this shit and it's right in the, and where they're standing is above where the sentinel is underground that boulevard trask so it's all coordinated and i love the reveal that magneto had this planned out right he had them he, well, he had his brotherhood his four characters like four four individuals that he's brought together to take on the x-men the brotherhood that are working together or whatever because of mistake professor x and all to send them down right to send them down to fight the Sentinel, which we'll get to. Oh my god. So there's a bunch of uh, fighting going on here. A bunch of fighting. So Beast versus Sabretooth. That was a cool matchup. I think that was really cool to see that. I really liked the fact that that fight kind of went down because it's a unique pair up. Because Wolverine, once again, wasn't there. And I mentioned this in part one. Wolverine would have, I think, immediately figured out that Professor X is not Professor X. That's Mystique. And I think the whole dynamic would have shifted in terms of this showdown if Wolverine was in the mix, I think. So him being out of commission here was actually made it worse. Now Wanda's searching around trying to find her dad. She knows he's somewhere. And then luckily they get in, uh, Cyclops and them get in. And then of course they, they go to, they go to the danger room. Somehow it protects them from the explosion, which is insane that it actually worked. Cause I'm like, okay, the whole entire mansion exploded. <laughs> How did they survive when we find out that it was the danger room, which is like crazy. And the whole, I am still in shock looking at this footage here of the, the light, all the lights coming out of the windows and the X mansion. And we see, of course, you see it towards the end of the episode. One of the last things you see the wide shot from the chopper of the mansion just completely in rubble and shit. It's insane. They did this because this is a game changer. Plus, there's also the fact that they're public now, right? We'll sort of get some more of that in a second because I'm trying to go in order. But my God, the X Mansion! I cannot believe they did that. I can't believe they pulled that shit off. Of course, there's Wolverine, and then and all that, and he's like healing factor and all this stuff. And they have the footage. I think they have the fo yeah. They have the footage of uh, Spike and um, <clears throat> sorry, Mithro and Nightcrawler. So they have the footage there because they're above them. So that's how they know. Here's an awkward moment. I got to point this out. It's awkward and I'll tell you why. Gambit and Rogue run into each other. I'm looking at it right now. And she's like about to lean up, maybe trying to kiss him. He has a card out. He's handing it to her. There's no dialogue because they don't have a voice actor for Gambit. And Rogue doesn't speak because then it would just be like, okay, she's having a one-sided conversation with this guy who's not talking. It's a weird moment. And I get it, because Rogue and Gambit, we know where that leads to. We know, for the most part, this whole back and forth. I know, but it's awkward because we don't have a voice actor for Gambit. I feel like they could have used this time for another action sequence or something else entirely. Maybe more dialogue between Magneto and Quicksilver. But they have this like moment where they're kind of staring at each other. He hands her a card, then of course it explodes, so she throws it before it explodes. But it's like a weird thing to where... We could have had something else here instead because it's just a weird, silent moment of like, and maybe it's like setting up the fact that down the road, this is going to be not as awkward because they're going to have voice actor. So we have Colossus fighting Toad. Then of course we have Blob in the mix as well. Um, and then we see that we see teamwork there, right? We see how Blob pushes him after Colossus is trying to throw stuff at Toad or whatever. And then when Blob pushes uh, Colossus over, we have Kitty pull him into the building that he's uh, in front of, throwing stuff at Toad. 
And then, of course, Avalanche it brings it down and shit. So it all worked out. Of course, then all, all down for the count or whatever. It's, it is what it is. Um, I think I did skip the part where Pyro got knocked out pretty fast because Storm pretty much got rid of him. Um, now, see, in Season 1, we had... We had the thing where Rogue touched Sabretooth and she became, like, Sabretooth-esque Rogue. She touched Beast because he was knocked out. I thought she was going to turn in, like, turn blue or whatever or show some indication that she's become Beast Rogue. Didn't happen, but she did get the strength of Beast in that moment to fight against Sabretooth a little bit. I like the fact that during this whole fight, <laughs> this whole entire fight, all these different characters are doing stuff throughout this fight. Wanda is just standing there trying to find her dad. She's like, I know he's here somewhere. He's using his powers. I don't know where the fuck he is. And eventually she does find him and that flashes back to all the memories and stuff. Because, of course, yeah, because we, because she sees Pietro up there with her dad. She immediately flashes back to Pietro and her dad standing there in the rain as she's being dragged off and being taken away and all that. So that really made her mad. And I love the sequence of when she finds him. She's walking between two buildings and you see like a wide shot and then a close up shot of her hands out like this as she's walking and like the, the ripple effect and shit of her powers. Oh my God. Like, it made me want so bad to see this Wanda. Like, this powerful Wanda right now. It's not even an adult yet. This powerful Wanda against Magneto when he's as powerful as he's now. But they don't really give it to us. They give us a little bit of something, but not too much, unfortunately. Because we have a lot going on in this episode. So, Magneto had this all planned out. He's like, we're... we're, we're and so he creates the hole they're all shaking in that like little area and they fall straight down to the hole and they all fall down they're all freak and then of course trash and them are freaking out like what the hell's going on and then here's all these mutants they're all landing here send the sentinel and all that and of course magneto's getting his brotherhood out of there and all that and magneto is basically there like as the sentinel comes out because as we're scrolling through here he lifts them all back up and trash like what's going on what's going on well he thing is here the sentinels out in the open fighting all of the all of the x-men and the brotherhood of course mystique is professor x like what the fuck but magnet has this all planned out because Pietro's like oh he's sending out the sentinel because he's like looking down and whatever he's like he sent out the sentinel it's like exactly how he would magneto knew trask was going to do it so magneto already knew trask was building a, a, a sentinel program or whatever he he had to have known all this how did he know when did he find out who knows but he had it all planned out because he lifted all of them up from being underground to fight out in the open in the public to show their powers. And they did. And there was choppers recording footage. It was being sent out everywhere. It was live streamed, whatever. It was live on television. Not really live streamed back then. But you get my point. It's out in the open. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this fight in terms of all the specifics. But we see a variety of the, uh, of the characters fighting against the Sentinel. We see live news covering it. The Sentinel to me and i couldn't really mention this part one i mean a little bit because of how strong it was i think the sentinel is too overpowered but i think the reason why it had to be here specifically is because let's just say because we had a lot of characters a lot i mean if you count the amount of characters that are in this action sequence against the sentinel i'm not even sure let me see how many if i can even count how many are here let's see so, it, I mean, in that shot, there's like five characters there alone. Let's see, let's try to get a better shot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's definitely like one or two more that's not like Storm's not in this shot. And I think there's someone else missing from this shot too. I think, maybe not. But they have all these characters. I think Beast was missing from this shot. Yeah, Beast is missing from this shot because you see Blob, Toad, Nightcrawler, Gene, Avalanche, Spike, um kitty and um rogue so you're missing you're missing beast and storm and i think maybe one more person is missing but there's so many characters let's just say it take it took four or five of them to team up with their different abilities to take down the sentinel it's done it's done pr and not like immediately but it's done right it's over the Sentinel was able to withstand all of them, and they all weren't working together at the same time, so I get that point, but like eventually, <laughs> later on, it does get destroyed and taken down. But they all literally were not, like they've, like the X-Men have worked together, but Scott wasn't there to kind of help lead, so that's kind of hurting this too, this whole situation, to help better coordinate at least the X-Men side. The Brotherhood haven't really coordinated, really worked together too much. They have a little bit, but they haven't really worked with the X-Men, so there's a lot of like things to make it to where this was never going to go well, right? 
but it's all out there. They're public. We have shots of all the of like different people, including uh, Nightcrawler's uh, girlfriend now, and different characters. And Duncan, I don't know if Duncan knew that was Gene. I know for a fact that you know Nightcrawler's girlfriend knows that's him. Uh, I'm not sure about the other characters, but I'm pretty because the, the the principal was also watching too. So I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. So we have a better shot of the Sentinel. We have all these like different colors under like it's like cannon or whatever one of these like or maybe it's like a power thing here on this chest i'm not really sure but we see the design and maybe they're going to redesign the sentinel as it gets reworked or whatever from trask or whatever and maybe this whole situation is going to get to the point where trask is going to make it a point that we need these sentinel programs look because look at all these mutants look at all them using their different powers because spike you know shooting the spikes and hitting like they, they was going to shoot rockets and exploded back because the spikes were stuck in there you have blob throwing a car and gene helping push it you have all this variety of stuff happening. Here's all the footage stuff for all the different characters who are looking at like the TV and stuff and seeing all the footage and all the mayhem. So we have the military coming in and Magneto is like, no, not yet. And he pushes them basically off away because he's like, I don't want you here. You're not supposed to be here. And then uh, we have more chaos, more destruction, and then it detects Magneto and then here comes Scarlet Witch. So it's like really bad timing. It detects Magneto from far away, the Sentinel, but then here she is. And this is the first time we're seeing her use like this blue energy kind of magic, right? First time we're actually seeing this. She uses it on Magneto and actually stops his powers. And then she has to attack the Sentinel because the Sentinel is going after Magneto. And then, of course, we have <laughs> the Stink Professor X using a chopper gunner <laughs> firing at the thing. And then we have the Sentinel being destroyed essentially by Magneto because he's able to take it out because he sends the rockets that fired back at him. So they go back to the expansion. Not and not everybody is taken back, right? They're, like Beast and a couple of them were captured by that goo. So they, I think they're taken too by Trask. I'm pretty sure they've been taken by Trask as well. The remaining X-Men and um, Brotherhood are back and they see the destruction of the mansion. It's pretty brutal. And then they see the people survive. The kids survive. Cyclops thought about it, going in the danger room. It worked out. And then, of course, he goes and confronts Mystique, Professor X. And then, you know, you know, Mystique is like, now it's getting more. Or what was the exact wording? Let's see here. And now things are about to get much worse. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Because we're still missing of we're still missing a variety of characters. So my hope is that the season three premiere is going to open up with directly after what occurred here. I don't I don't want to time jump. I mean, if there is, there better be a good explanation. But I I want to know what happened to Professor X. What what happened to these other uh, mutants that were taken that that were captured in that green goo or whatever that free that basically freezes or locks up or whatever. Because that's the way that Wolverine was taken. My God, so they're public now. There's no going back. They are now public figures now. Or at least mutants are now public knowledge now. And Magneto's um, has a new version of his Brotherhood. We have new characters in the mix. It's a lot. It's a lot, but it's it's so cool. I'm loving the fact that this show was 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 willing to do this in terms of making these big bold decisions that will drastically change the rest of the show. In terms of making them uh, public now, in terms of mutants being public, and the fact that at the end of the day, you know, this show is willing to push the limits in terms of what it's doing. You know, I lost my train of thought there for a second. I was trying to think, what am I trying to say here? Because the show initially was making some pretty interesting story decisions, but now I think they've really pushed and went further than what I was expecting initially. Because... I wasn't sure how far they were going to go. I mean, but once they teased Apocalypse, I should have known they were going to start doing some pretty big decisions because Apocalypse is a game changer. That's a giant thing. And then, of course, Wanda being introduced in the last episode. Well, at least these are two, this is a two-parter, but in episode 15, Hex Factor changed a lot of stuff too. So these two episodes were so well done. I cannot wait to see what they do. I cannot wait to see what happens in season three, man. This is some good, good stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. Hope you guys enjoyed my reaction to part one and part two of uh, Day. Is it Day of Reckoning? Day of Reckoning. So well done. I can't wait to see what happens. I don't know. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to know the answers, but I also like the fact that I'm in the dark, and it's still a mystery in terms of what's all happening with the trash stuff. What happened to Fresh Rex? All that. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. 
I will talk to you guys soon. Can't wait for season three. Peace out.